Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And we welcome you back to our final segment this week on Inside West Virginia Politics. We're looking at the West Virginia Treasurer's race. We've already heard from the incumbent Democrat John Perdue. Let's hear from the Republican. We go to our studios, WDVM TV 25 in the Eastern Panhandle and Republican Riley Moore. Riley, good morning. Mark, good morning. How are you? I'm doing very well, keeping busy at the Capitol, uh, covering everything that's going on, including politics 2020. Why do you want to be the state treasurer of West Virginia? Well, Mark, you know, this comes from a place of a real deep and abiding, unadulterated affection and love for the people of the state of West Virginia and their future and the future of my children and their children as well. And I think that we need real change in the treasurer's office. We need more accountability, transparency, and modernization in that office. Well, give us some examples of what you might change. Yeah, I'd love to. So first and foremost, in terms of accountability, I'm running on term limits. I'd like to see all constitutional officers limited to no more than three terms. So we're able to ensure that there's new ideas flowing into these constitutional offices and we have new blood constantly in the system. Secondly, as it relates to modernization, myself, I started my career off as a welder working in a mining operation. I'd like to see the 529 college savings account be expanded to the blue collar workforce here in West Virginia where they'd be able to save to be able to use a savings account for equipment, certifications, additional training, whatever might be necessary for them to be successful in their vocation and trade. That was a real impediment for me when I was starting my career off as a welder and that's something that I'd like to see is for us to not solely focus on the college, but what about our vocational uh, schools and our students that are working in labor? And lastly, in terms of accountability, what I'd like to see is an audit, top to bottom of the office, because I do believe that there's duplicative responsibilities and issues that the treasurer's office is currently handling. I'd like to know what those are. And if we can save money for the people in the state of West Virginia, that's an absolute good thing and something that I'd like to be able to do if I were to be elected. I've got to ask you about an issue currently facing the treasurer's office. And of course, you were in the House of Delegates when this passed, and I'm going to ask you how you voted on it. But the medical cannabis bill remains stalled. Uh, the treasurer's office is trying to come up with a banking fix to get banks that will accept these monies uh, that are concerned about fear of federal prosecution if they handle marijuana money, even if it's for medicinal purposes. Where do you stand on trying to get this fixed? And, and how did you vote in the legislature on medical cannabis? Well, first and foremost, I voted uh, in the affirmative for that bill. If you do remember, Mark, uh, the bill last year in 2018 that ended up passing this year was my bill. Uh, I was actually very forward leaning on medical cannabis program in West Virginia. And so I think it's very unfortunate to see this delay from the treasurer's office, no matter where we might stand on the issue, the law is the law and there's been a long lead up to this issue as it relates to banking and to see the treasurer not be able to execute what the legislature has mandated as well as the governor by signing that bill I think it's an unnecessary delay and I think it's something that needs to be alleviated immediately. Alright well I'm sure it'll become an issue in the campaign.